James, you don't muck around with where to place the blame for Australia's situation. You said, and I quote, nine years of coalition governments are responsible for this activist high court. Can you explain that? Well, if you look at some of the decisions that people on the center right or even interpretive conservatives, people who want the democratic process to make the calls, not the unelected judiciary, well, it's coalition appointed judges. So the Love case, you know, out of the majority of four, three were appointed by the Libs, all Brandis appointments. In the big federalism case, Vanderstock, two more uh, coalition appointments, uh, unanimous court on this recent uh, one about releasing the dangerous people. Uh, that, that, by the way, that decision overturned uh, Al-Khattab, which had Dyson Hayden, Ian Callanan, McHugh, and I forget who the fourth one is. So we've got a judiciary now that are, you know, I don't know what they do in Liberal Party cabinet rooms, but they, when, when it comes to appointments, it's like they say, we can't appoint any conservatives to anything. You look at the appointments to the um, ABC, the entire Australian Human Rights Commission, which didn't say a word, not a single word during two years of COVID thuggery and what mm -hmm. the Lord Sumption called the biggest inroads on our civil liberties in 200 years, nothing. Those are all coalition appointees. And the high court is, you know, it's just not a very good high court right now. Uh, I, You know, it's arguably the weakest one ever. And you, sure, you can blame Labour, but to some extent, the Labour appointees, you know, Gagler's as good as anyone. He's, he's a left-wing guy, but I don't know what the libs were doing. I watched Sky After Dark and you're watching Credlin and she's angry about this decision, but, you know... One of the judges who made the call was one that Tony Abbott appointed. I don't well, know. You know, we, we have a high court that is not very good. And and this is a problem around the Anglosphere. The Republicans in the U.S. have sort of figured out how to do it. Yeah, but if kinda, you, you have to find people who are used to being hated because they will be attacked. It's kind of like the, uh, the Liberals complain about the coverage of the ABC, but then they slide them a billion dollars under the table and then they're confused as to why nothing's getting any better. There's no, there's no punishment for the woke when they start doing the wrong thing. I mean, why didn't, well, the Liberals, they, why didn't the Liberals threaten the ABC and say, hey, actually adhere to your charter or you're not going to get the same level of funding? Nothing. Crickets from the, uh, the Liberals. But zero. The, but the question is, but why? And, and when why? you talk about that, the, the new guy in Canada, Poiliev, he has had about 15 points in the polls. He said he's going to cut a billion dollars a year from the CBC budget. And you know what? The coverage is pretty much the same. You know, they hate you anyway. And now he's got an excuse every time they run negative coverage of the Tories. He just says, look, they, you know, it's just because of the money I'm going to take away from them. The libs are useless. They just care more. The, there's too many liberal MPs who care about what they're going to say at the dinner party they go to next week. That's the problem. Yeah, well, Jacinta Price proved that if you treat the press mean, you actually get a better result than if you treat them carefully, as uh, so many Liberal politicians do. But the question people are asking, James, is why does the Liberal Party keep appointing work judges? Like, wh why do they do it? What's the benefit for them? What's the motivation behind doing it? I can't work it out. Well, there's a, there's a bunch of things that work. One, the entire legal profession has moved considerably to the political left. Right? It's not easy to find an Ian Callanan. It's not easy to find a Dyson Hayden. Uh, it's not even easy to find a sort of McHugh. So, or, so, or Hayne. These are, you know, so that's one problem. Uh, again, you know, 60 years ago, the median lawyer was politically to the right of the median voter. And today, the median lawyer, and this is true around the Anglosphere, is, is way, way to the left of the median voter. If you want some of the most woke workplaces, go to a big, go to one of the big law firms in Sydney and make sure you have your pronouns everywhere. So it's not easy to find these judges. Secondly, to some extent, uh, they're still enthralled to identity politics. So they say, oh, we need a woman. No, you don't. You need the best person. Yeah, no, we got to have a woman. Well, it's even harder to find a conservative woman judge than it is to find a conservative male judge. So they've given up they don't say it, but implicitly they care more about group representation, identity politics, than they do about finding an interpretively conservative pro-federalism judge. So, you know, under uh, Abbott, they appointed the wife of the retiring judge. Like this has never happened in the world anywhere. And that's what they do. And she has not been good. 
You know, she has not been good. She was she's been bad on she was bad in love. And she she has, you know, the labor could have appointed her um, later on under uh, under Turnbull. We get um, more bad judges. Uh, I mean, when I say bad, I mean, they're not interpretively conservative. They're undermining democratic decision making. This latest decision to release people, it's based on the separation of powers doctrine, which was basically judicially made up and starting in the 1950s, mid-1950s. I sort of agreed with Greg Craven's piece in The Australian. I haven't agreed with him since the voice debate started, but he's gotten back onto sort of sane ground. Canada, Britain, New Zealand, there's no separation of doctrines power. The judges have sort of made up this thing because our constitution comes in separate chapters. You can't, the, the democratically elected legislature can't hand decisions off to the executive, to a cabinet minister that says after someone has served his sentence as a, you know, a convicted, serious convicted criminal whom you can't send back to a home country because basically they'll be executed, you can't leave them in indefinite detention. And they do this under the guise that only judges can punish people. Well, it's not like the legislation was giving some cabinet minister an ability to go around and imprison whomever they wanted. It was a very narrow area. And four of the best judges ever in al Kateb in 2004, interpretively conservative judges, upheld that as, as compatible with the Constitution. If you read this latest case, the reasoning of the seven judges, all of them, I sort of have a warm spot for Stewart, but even he caved in. And again, here's the thing. And nobody knows this better than a conservative working at a university. If you're not prepared to be hated, if you want people to like you, you're not the right person for a judicial appointment for the right of center or to the ABC 